Esteemed hockey fans, it is with deepest pride and greatest pleasure that we welcome you tonight to the pond. We invite you to relax and take your seat as the city of Anaheim, the National Hockey League, and the Mighty Ducks celebrate a new era in sports entertainment. For this story, we have to go back, all the way back to 1966. Professional sports is probably not the first entity that comes to mind when thinking about Walt Disney or his company. As early as 1966, Walt Disney was involved with Gene Autry and the California Angels. Though the extent to which Disney participated in professional sports is limited, the company bearing his name would later change the sports landscape forever. In 1984, the Walt Disney Company was preparing to undergo its first major executive transition in its 61-year history and its first attempt to integrate outside leadership into the CEO and president positions. Throughout the next 21 years under the leadership of Michael Eisner, the Walt Disney Company would seek to diversify their business in many ways. This is the story of one of their most expensive endeavors, which included the purchase of an MLB team, the expansion of an NHL franchise, and the city caught in the middle. The new executive team of Michael Eisner and Frank Wells would not wait long to begin making a major impact on their new partnership at Disney. In the mid-1990s, Eisner's focus shifted to Disneyland and the city in which it resided, Anaheim. Due to the popularity of Disneyland, small, unsightly motels and neon signs began to pop up around Walt's original theme park. This trend was disturbing to Walt, which is why when scouting land for what would later become known as the Walt Disney World Resort, Disney made sure to purchase enough land that his projects would never be obstructed by these distractions. In the early 1990s, Disneyland was faced with the harsh reality of sinking attendance, spurred by the negative impact of riots in the Los Angeles area and a major earthquake. But by 1995, under the leadership of Paul Pressler, Disneyland reached record attendance of 15.5 million visitors. The combined forces of George Lucas and Walt Disney Imagineering strikes again with the Indiana Jones Adventure. The surprises won't stop as Disneyland guests never experience the same journey twice. New attractions such as Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye and a refreshed Tomorrowland were primary factors in revitalizing the then 40-year-old park. As cost projections continued to soar on the concept of building a West Coast version of Epcot, Eisner began thinking outside of the box for many ways to make the city of Anaheim a more desirable tourist destination. In conjunction with this, the Walt Disney Company and the city of Anaheim were working on a resolution to create a symbiotic landscape for the surrounding areas of Disneyland Park. This resolution would become known as the Anaheim Resort District. Just down Catella Avenue, Anaheim city officials broke ground on a brand new state-of-the-art stadium in June of 1991. Just a few miles from Disneyland's main entrance, this new entertainment complex was built in the hope of luring an NHL or NBA franchise. Unfortunately for Anaheim, no team was interested in moving to Orange County. Michael Eisner, who described himself as obsessed with hockey, stated that his interest in the sport began when his sons played growing up. Eisner's wife, Jane, urged him to have the studio create a film focusing on hockey. Eisner then suggested to Jeffrey Katzenberg, the then chairman of the Walt Disney Studios, to commission a script revolving around this topic. From Walt Disney Pictures, he's a hotshot attorney who's never lost. Yes. Forced to coach a hockey team that's never won. Keep swinging, maybe I'll give him a cold. He'll try to teach them how to win. You think losing is funny? Well, men at first, but once you get the hang of it. In 1992, the Mighty Ducks made their big screen debut, becoming one of the top films for the Disney Studios that year, grossing over $50 million in the domestic United States. According to Eisner, just months before the Mighty Ducks movie debuted to the public, the owner of the Los Angeles Kings, Bruce McNall, reached out to him gauging Disney's interest in perhaps owning a second franchise in the Los Angeles region. Though Eisner knew that owning a professional sports team is very rarely profitable, he had a variety of other reasons to consider this opportunity. Disney was becoming desperate at growing their Anaheim Park from a single-day experience to a true vacation destination. 
After the financial disaster that was Euro Disney, the company became skeptical of large budget expansions to their parks. Eisner looked at the situation in Anaheim as becoming ideal though. There was a brand new $110 million sports arena that was fully funded by the city of Anaheim and their taxpayers just miles away from Disney property, yet no team to officially call it home. Disney now had a hit movie based around the sport of hockey, and the city of Anaheim was looking to mitigate negative press by spending so much money on a stadium that would at best only be used for concerts. Eisner realized the huge potential for cross-promotion and creating worldwide recognition for the city of Anaheim. I saw Field of Dreams, and there was an arena, and there was no team, and uh, I added two and two up, and I uh, came out to about 11, and uh, I went and uh, got the franchise. Headline news made by the National Hockey League last week. The awarding of two conditional expansion franchises. One to Anaheim, California, and the Disney Company, led by Michael Eisner. So, in December of 1992, the Walt Disney Company officially received conditional approval from the NHL to establish a new franchise, which came with a price tag of $50 million. To put that number into perspective, the most recent expansion NHL franchise, the Vegas Golden Knights, paid $500 million as an expansion fee to the NHL. Disneyland president Jack Lindquist would become the team's chief marketeer, and Tony Tavares was set to take charge of the newly created entity, Disney Sports Enterprises. So the name of this team is officially the Mighty Ducks. It's a quack heard around the world. One, two, three... With that momentous quack, history was made. The team logo and color scheme was left up to a fan design contest. Additionally, Disney committed to youth hockey in Orange County by building a state-of-the-art twin rink practice facility in Anaheim. Designed by Frank Gehry, the famous architect of the Walt Disney Concert Hall, Team Disney Anaheim, and a plethora of other projects. This facility would also be used for Mighty Ducks practices, the next movie in the Mighty Ducks saga, D2, would also be filmed in Anaheim at this facility. Finally, under the 30-year lease Disney signed with the city of Anaheim, they were given the right to name the stadium, which had been known as the Anaheim Arena until that point. The Pond at Anaheim. The Mighty Ducks of Anaheim and their new stadium, The Pond, was largely met with groans and laughter when initially announced. But Eisner and the Walt Disney Company had the last laugh and the sale of Mighty Ducks merchandise went through the roof. Within just a couple years, the Mighty Ducks recorded record sales in merchandise, accounting for 80% of the $1 billion of NHL merchandise sales. The success of the Mighty Ducks merchandising led to the Los Angeles Dodgers hiring Disney to market their merchandise operation. Under Disney, the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim were initially a great investment for the company. In their inaugural season, the Ducks had a record-breaking 33 wins as an expansion team. Attendance was also well-received in their first season in Anaheim as they sold out 27 of their 41 home games, filling the pond to an average of 98.9%. In the 96-97 season, the Ducks posted 85 points in the standings, giving them their first playoff berth, playing the Phoenix Coyotes in the conference finals. The Ducks earned their first playoff series win that year, defeating the Coyotes in seven games. They went on to lose in the conference semifinals, getting swept by the Detroit Red Wings in four games. The Walt Disney Company owned the Mighty Ducks for 13 years, making the playoffs in just four of those seasons. In 2005, the Walt Disney Company agreed to sell the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim to Broadcom Corporation owner Henry Samueli and his wife, Susan Samueli. The Samuelis promptly changed the team name, dropping Mighty and revamping the color scheme to distance themselves from the Disney ownership group. 